When I first got serious about my YouTube channel, one of the first big purchases that I made was to seriously upgrade my camera by getting a Sony a6100 and running that through a capture card. And that camera has been absolutely fantastic for me, but it can't do what the camera you're seeing right now can do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the OBSBOT Tiny 4K. And it has one pretty big trick up its sleeve that I think there's really only one good way to demonstrate, and it's by walking away. Because this camera has its own gimbal and can track you wherever you go in the room. Let's start off this video with an unboxing. All right, guys, here we have the OBSBOT Tiny 4K. I must admit this is not a company I had heard of until very recently, but I've heard good things about this webcam, and they were kind enough to send it over to me to take a look at. So that's exactly what we're going to do here in this video. As you can see, it is AI-powered, which means it can do all kinds of fun parlor tricks, which I actually think might end up being fairly useful, and it is capable of shooting in 4K. Otherwise, the box does look pretty clean. So we're going to go ahead and get into this thing. So we definitely have already a fairly premium unboxing experience. Sometimes the boxes that these things come in do look a little bit on the cheap side, but that really should be the case as this webcam does retail for $239. This is not a cheap webcam. Okay. This is not your Logitech C920, C922. This should be something far superior to something like that. It looks like here we have probably our booklets, our instructions, which typically for webcam, I'm not gonna look at, but for this, you might actually need to. It can do a lot of pretty interesting things. And this is unexpected. This is actually like a carrying case for the webcam. And it does, uh, yeah, actually feels quite nice. As we open this thing up, you can see the webcam in there now, and you can see how big that lens is, especially compared to something like a Logitech C920. We'll do some like actual comparisons here in a moment, but for now, we're just gonna continue the unboxing. This appears to be some sort of a mount. We'll look at that here in a moment. What do we have in the bags? This might be power, some sort of a barrel plug. That's not something I had considered. And here we have a uh, cable that appears to be USB-C to C. That is a good thing as well. And we also have some sort of little dongle. Ah, this looks like an A to C adapter. That is actually a very smart thing to have. And last but not least, the camera itself. And you can see here, this thing's all floppy. It wiggles around. And that's because this thing is motorized. It can do all sorts of really strange things interesting things. Yes, there is power. I wanted to take a second and clarify that bit there about the barrel plug and the power going in. You probably saw there's a barrel plug for power on the back of the webcam. There's also the USB-C input. You may be asking yourself, do I need to use both of these? And the answer appears to be probably not. For me, I plugged this webcam directly into the computer without using that barrel plug and it fired up and it's functioned just fine. I even did some Googling, looked around to see if other people were using it or needed to use it. And I honestly couldn't find anyone actually needing to use it. So you probably won't need to. It also has a base station there so we can sit quite comfortably just sitting down like that. But I'm assuming this is yes, magnetic. So this is how you would put it on like a monitor or something like that. And this appears to be some sort of adhesive here. So that will make it stick to whatever you're mounting it on that much better. Let's get this thing powered up and plugged into my computer now though. All right, so right now you are seeing again the OBSBOT Tiny 4K, and you can also see the application here next to it, and there's a lot for us to go over inside their program. This thing can do a lot of stuff. First off, you can see presets, which are really, really cool, and interestingly enough, it appears that all your settings get saved on the camera itself, so you unplug it, plug it into another computer, and all of your settings, your stuff, all goes with it, which is fantastic. AI tracking, it says tap to unlock, which is basically where if you click on that, now it is locked. It is no longer tracking me. If you click it again, it then begins tracking me again. But there's a really cool trick to this camera and that is the use of AI gestures. So rather than having to click that button, I can simply hold up a hand. It'll flash blue on the webcam telling me that it's done and now I can move around and it is no longer tracking me. Doing this again will have it track me 
Again, you saw it just changed on the application. This gesture will actually trigger it to zoom in on me and doing it again will, if you do it too quickly, it doesn't work, but doing it again will cause it to zoom back out. This is really, really useful to quickly make changes to what you're doing. You should also see Headroom Standard in Motion. So Headroom does exactly what you think. It changes where it's focusing to give me more Headroom, of course. Standard is going to put it more kind of just on my face. And then Motion seems to just kind of be focusing on uh, my chest almost. Maybe it's just more interested in the motion. I'm not totally sure what the difference is there. Standard does seem to be the best for me, but here's an interesting thing right now. You see it's actually aimed a little bit lower than I would like it. So let's use the view in Gimbal, which allows you to aim this camera wherever you want it to be. I can actually look like really far. I'm looking at its own base station right now. That's how far around it can look. This is absolutely ridiculous. There's my Sony camera. Let's come back to me here. Will it see my face and recenter? Good job, camera. So as you can see, you can kind of move things around on your own there. Then you do have some little presets here. So 86 degrees, which is what you're on now, 78 and then 65, which can also be useful to kind of frame things how you want to frame it. If we go into image, there's a few things we can do here as well. HDR, I'm not going to turn on because it's going to look terrible unless you're using stuff to make HDR look good. Or focus, you can actually do a manual focus if you want to do that, although I'm gonna leave it on auto because otherwise I'm moving around too much, it's gonna be out of focus. You can have it focus on your face or globally. You can also adjust your exposure, anti-flicker, white balance. You can see here what I've done to the image. I've boosted saturation ever so slightly and I've also punched up the sharpness a little bit as well, just to make this look a little bit better in my opinion. Now I do want to point out back on the console tab that this little control here is, as you saw earlier, a little bit finicky and a little bit difficult to get it aimed exactly where you want. I would advise that instead of using that, you just make sure you've got your tracking turned on and you basically use that. You kind of get it to be where you want it to be and then you hold up that hand and you turn off the tracking and lock it in place. That's one of my biggest complaints with this device is the fact that that control, it's almost like it was designed to be used on a touch screen or something. It's just a really bad implementation and does not work well. Just do what I just did instead and you're gonna be way better off. And of course this thing does have a microphone which I do need to test. All right, so you are now hearing the audio directly from the webcam, and it is about you know an arm's length away from me. So I'm kind of curious to see how this thing's actually going to sound. Of course, you're comparing this to a pretty high-end microphone here, which I've now switched back to my Elgato Wave 3 or something like that. It's this one. You can see it. It's the Elgato one. So how did this microphone sound? Let's find out. Honestly, I think that that sounded okay. Now, I will also say, though, I'm zoomed in a little bit. So you could switch back to that microphone. Let's zoom out and then physically move closer and you're gonna have better audio quality by being closer. So maybe this helped. Now I said earlier that I was going to compare this thing to the uh, Logitech C922 and that is exactly what we are doing here. This was the tried and true webcam for many, many years. And I haven't touched any of the settings. I've not gone in and tried to make it look any better. This is just what it looks like, okay? Straight out of the box. And I think you'll agree with me. It looks so much worse than this OBSBOT camera. And it looks in a totally different world from my Sony Alpha 6100. So let's really quickly, let's go through them. Here is the Logitech C922. And here is the OBSBOT Tiny 4K, which of course does have a much wider field of view. You're gonna get a lot more in the frame with this webcam, which might be good or bad, but you can use that application to punch it in a little bit if you want to do that. I think that the overall clarity, the detail, the colors, probably all gonna look better on this webcam. Let's really quickly do a comparison though to my Sony a6100, which again is a full-fledged camera, which cost me something like seven or $800 whenever I bought it. So this should look a whole lot better than either one of those, but it should give you a good frame of reference either way. I do also want to take a second and see how well this thing performs in low light. So we're back on our Sony camera now. To turn my light off, this is what we're looking like right now. Now let's switch back to the OBSBOT and see what we're looking at here. Honestly, only being lit by the screen in front of me, I don't think this, well, there's also a lamp over there, but that's kind of far away. I don't think that this looks too bad, right? Like this is all, there's a lot of glare here, but I think that this actually does still look 
pretty decent and it's going to look a world better than what the Logitech camera could have done, which you can see here is just perpetually washed out and overexposed looking because I know people are going to complain about it. Let me see if I can make this look any better. All right, with the lights on, this is about as good as I'm going to get the Logitech C922 and it's not, it's not touching. It's not touching the off spot. And honestly, you just shouldn't expect it to because this thing just has superior camera hardware compared to that old Logitech webcam. Now, one thing I do want to point out to you, something I discovered in my own experimentation while making this video, is if you do use the zoom feature, it's not going to look quite as good. Now, that should be rather obvious to you, but in my experience, what was really strange was when I uploaded a video to YouTube while most of it was shot zoomed in, the quality looked far worse than it did just on my computer, in particular, when I was shooting or I was viewing it back rather at 1080p. So there's something to keep in mind. When I was zoomed out, for whatever reason, it seems to like that a lot better. So definitely keep that in mind. So let's take a second here and look at this device in its store. And like I said earlier, it is not a cheap webcam, all right? It is $269. However, Amazon does have it for $239. So potentially save some money there. Did not have this little tripod in my kit, but nonetheless, it looks to be the same thing. Otherwise, again, $239. And for that price, I think it actually does make a decent amount of sense, right? So there's another camera like the Insta360 Link, which is really, really similar to this, and it's up closer to $300. So this is going to come in cheaper than that device. And if you compare it to something even more premium, like the Razer Keo Pro Ultra, which has the best image quality of any webcam ever to exist, something that's actually approaching cameras like my Sony camera, that device is going to be $400. And of course, it's stationary. It doesn't have any of the cool AI features. So again, for $239, does this thing make sense? Who is it for? Well, I think it actually does make some sense. And if you're someone that's taken a lot of, you know, digital meetings, internet meetings, and maybe you don't want to have to worry about, are you going to be in frame or not? Maybe you move around a lot. It's going to make a lot of sense for that kind of stuff. But even beyond that, if you just want a webcam that's got better visual quality, better image quality than your basic webcams, it's going to be right up there with some of the better webcams on the market. I can tell you exactly how we're going to actually continue using this webcam. It's not going to be in here with me necessarily, but my wife has actually recently started her own YouTube channel covering cozy games as she likes to describe them. And she was using that Logitech C920 webcam and it just did not look good. So then she was using her phone as a webcam to replace that kind of crummy old webcam. And there are definitely some problems with that. Well, this thing, is going to be right on par with her phone's quality, but is also gonna give her the ability to get the camera angle exactly as she wants it without having to adjust her monitor around and do anything weird. And it's also really simple for her to frame it. Like I said, you can just hold up a hand and move around, get it wherever you want it to be, and then lock it back down and you're done. And that's something that I think she's actually going to really enjoy being able to do. I think this is a, a pretty cool webcam, guys. So with all that being said, big shout out and thanks to Obsbot for sending this thing over for me to check out and give a review. As always, they are seeing this review at the exact same time that you are and no money changed hands for this review. They simply sent me the device to check out. I will have an affiliate link in the description down below to Amazon. I'll also link to their website, which is not an affiliate link. If you want to check it out, you can use those links to uh, support the channel, or at least the Amazon link to support the channel. Guys, hit that subscribe button for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.